we're going to take you on a journey on the Chester to Crewe line which was opened 175 years ago on the 1st of October 1840. We're going to begin in Crewe station and we're going to take you to all the disused railway station of which there are five between Crewe and Chester. Crewe station was the first station to have its own adjacent railway hotel, the Crewe Arms. Queen Victoria stayed on her way up to Scotland in about 1840. Crewe itself, the station, is built in the parish of Crewe Green. Crewe station was completed in 1837 and at the time was one of the most historic stations in the world. Uh, Nantwich and Winsford turned down the opportunity to have the stations there, uh, so they were much like Decca with the Beatles in that respect. And Crewe Station is 158 miles north of London, 234 miles south of Glasgow, and 3,333 miles from New York. Uh, but Richard Branson sadly hasn't given us that route as yet. Crewe has 12 platforms dating from the 19th century. Whirlaston Station is now disused. It's the first stop after Crewe, between Crewe and Chester, and was opened in 1840. It was originally named Nantwich, but Nantwich was given its own station in 1858, which is when it changed its name to Whirlaston. This is the site of Calverley, which was the next stop on the Crewe to Chester line, and was opened in 1840 and closed in 1960 still used as you can see Calvary, Calvary is near a Roman village called Alprahan I do remember when there was a lady signal person there years ago when it was open and that was quite something in the 1960s to have a lady a signal person or signaller as they call them and that closed in about 1969, the station. This is Beeston Castle and Tarpley station, one of the other disused stations, the fourth uh, station along the line from Crewe to Chester. And in 1963, the Beeching Report recommended that all these small passenger stations were closed. So this station closed in 1965. And one mile down the road is Beeston Castle, which was built in the 1220s uh, a former royal castle uh, built by Ranulf de Blondeville on his return from the Crusades. And another village near here is Tattenall, which is mentioned in the Domesday book. Waverton Station was opened in 1840, but it was closed again in 1898 and moved 0.43 miles down the road. The Duke of Westminster wanted a station near his residence at Eaton Hall uh, next, to the main, next to the little country lane. So the railways obliged, no doubt with the help of the Duke of Westminster, to have the station rebuilt next to the lane leading uh, not far from Eaton Hall. This second station was closed in 1965. Chester Station was originally called Chester General Station to distinguish it from Northgate, which was another station not far from here and which is now a large leisure centre in Chester. Uh, involved in the construction was Thomas Brassey, who was one of the world's greatest building contractors of his time, and also involved were C.H. Wilde and Robert Stevenson. The wooden owls were brought to Chester Station 25 years ago to try and deter the problem of pigeons. Um, in that time, unfortunately, the pigeons have become quite immune to the owls, as you can see. Chester Station's beautiful Italianate frontage was designed by Francis Thompson. I've enjoyed our journey on the Crewe to Chester line. I would like to wish that railway line a very happy 175th birthday.